Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In the last video, we talked about how we wired the 24 volt scooter to 36 volts and added a speed controller. Consequently, we overvolted the scooter and then we overused the scooter. We took it up a big hill and we blew up the motor. Uh, if you remember, this is our old 24 volt motor. We ordered a 36 volt motor, or I'm sorry, a 24 volt 350 watt motor that came today. So I'm pretty excited to get this thing in the scooter today. Try it out. Stick with me. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's open this box and see what we got. Oh. Came in from Amazon today. I was pretty excited about it. Pretty quick shipping. Packed pretty well. Here we go. A Yegu DC motor. Output 24 or 350 watts, voltage 24 volts. Model JK0232, speed 2700 RPM. Let's compare that with what we got here. I don't know if the stats are on this motor. They are not. Okay, but we can compare. The case is smaller. Um, it's not as wide. Let's see how it is in terms of diameter. Diameter appears to be the same. So it's the same diameter, which is good, right, for rubbing on the road. Um, because we got this mounted underneath the scooter, but the uh, but the depth is different, so it's got a different depth to it, same diameter. Let's compare the mounts, and it looks like oh my god, we might get lucky here. It looks like the mounts are the same, which would be great. So if this motor will bolt right up into the scooter underneath where the old motor was, we will be incredibly lucky. Let's see if it'll fit. If I can even get it in here. I'm going to twist it sideways a little bit and then see if I can pivot it. Hmm, it looks like it's going to take a little work to get this in there. I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky. Um, it does not want to pivot like the other one does. It's probably because it's so much wider. Um, but we'll fool around with it. We'll see if we can get it to mount. Um, it also comes with sprocket. Let's compare the sprocket to the old one. Here's the old sprocket, here's the new sprocket. Geez, they look the same. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's got the same sprocket. That's fantastic. It's got the same sprocket. It looks like the same width, too, all right? We may get very lucky on this build, yes. It looks like about the same width. So it's got 11 tooth sprocket, same diameter, a little bit wider, uh, maybe a little bit of problem bolting it in. Um, let's see what we can do. Okay, we've run into a little bit of a fitment problem with the new motor versus the old motor because the old one is thinner. Um, the old casing is pretty easy to get in there. Um, this is an MY10 something slash B. Um, so Anyway, slides up in there pretty easily, rotate the motor, lines up with the, with the uh, bolt holes, right? Piece of cake, puts it in there, aligns it with the chain. The new motor, however, I found, because it's wider, is not doing the same thing. So if I try to put it up in here, right, and then I try to rotate it, it looks like these ears, I think it's hitting on, I think it's hitting on that as well because it's wider. Is it hitting on the battery case? Maybe it's hitting on the battery case as well. Let's take out the battery case and see what we can do with this. This I think just lifts out. Yep, it just lifts out. So we'll take the battery case out. Of course maybe the switches are going to be in the way of getting this thing out too. Alright? So batteries are disconnected. Take the batteries out. Oh, there we go. Oh, brake cable goes through there. I didn't realize that. That might be a little bit of a, an issue getting it out. Let's see if I can kind of get this thing to pop. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we got this out. Well, not completely out because the brake cable runs through it. I'll slack up the brake cable a little bit. See if I can get that to lift. A little bit there. That may give us a little bit of extra room. Oh, let's try this. Okay, so put the sprocket in this way. 
right? Um, and then we'll try to get it up in there and rotate it. Oh, actually, now look at now look at it's rotating. Okay, so we may be able. To, oh my God, we may be able to get this thing to work. Holy cow! Look at that. It lines up. It lines up. Oh, I'm very excited about that. Oh, I'm very excited about that. Okay, let's just tap this back down in there. There we go. It looks like the holes line up too. Could we really get that lucky? This will be tremendously lucky if this works out. This would be fantastic. It'd be so easy to do. It'd be so easy to do. Let me find where I put those screws, those mounting screws, around here somewhere. Hmm, I don't know where those mining screws are. Okay, found the mining screws. Actually, they were right under the tripod. So, now I need to fill up the head screwdriver. Okay, now I got my Phillips head screwdriver. I got the mounting screws, I got the Phillips head screwdriver. Let's see how we do. We got the motor in here. It looks like it's bolted up. Let's see if these screws will thread in there. That one looks like it's threading in there without a problem. Let's see this one here. There we go. This is going to be way too easy. Of course, I say that. Looks like the bolt holes line up. This is a bigger motor. 350 watt, and the nice thing about it is, I read the reviews on the 500 watt, which I also have coming, right? The 500 watt is even the thicker motor. Um, the problem with the 500 watt motor is it interferes with the kickstand, and this one doesn't. This one clears the kickstand. So I've read, the, I've watched the YouTube videos where the 500 watt motor, you have to actually remove the kickstand and you have to reconfigure the brake the rear brake because it interferes with the rear brake as well. This one it looks like you don't have to do either one of those. Um, it's a bigger motor um, than the 250, but it looks like it's going to be a direct bolt-in upgrade, which is going to be nice. The other thing I have with this scooter, this 300, and I've seen on YouTube videos where other ones do not, so they, they struggle with the fitment of the chain. Of course, I'm struggling with the chain being stuck in there right now. Um, there we go. But they struggle with the fit fitment of the chain. Um, they have to keep moving the motor to get the chain tension correct. But for some reason, this 300 has an adjustable chain tension. So it's got the slotted rear wheel on it. So it's pretty easy to put the, um, the chain on. Whoops, I gotta start it the other way. As opposed to moving the motor around, it's more like a uh, motorcycle or actually a regular scooter uh, that I can just move the wheel back and forth and adjust the tension. Let's see how the tension is. The tension actually feels really good. Look at that. The tension looks fantastic. So the motor's mounted. The sprocket is on. The chain is on. Oh, you know what? It's not on the front sprocket. Maybe that's why the chain tension is so good. Well, that's not very good, is it? So let me take, try to take this thing back off again. Let's see where I can get it. Oh, then I'm gonna have to disconnect the motor. I don't think that I can snap it up on the sprocket. Now it's gonna be too tight to try to do that. Let me figure out what I'm gonna do here. I need to get the chain off the side. Here we go, without pinching my fingers. There, okay, so I dismounted the chain. I'm gonna remount it on the front axle. I'll mount it on the top of the rear axle. This has got a one-way clutch in the sprocket, so you can only put it on one way. Um, so actually what you do is you just start it on, on the top, and then you rotate it around while keeping it on the front sprocket. This is jamming up underneath there somehow for some reason. Not sure why. Check that out again. See what it's stuck on. Oh, it looks like it was stuck on one of the bolts. Okay, so let's try it again. Keep the, uh, keep the bottom out a little bit so it won't get stuck on the bolt again. I'm gonna try to get this around. Is this gonna work? And then I 
and fill up the front. Well, this is easier in theory than it is in practice, apparently. Let's see. And basically what I'm trying to do is just avoid taking the rear wheel off or loosening up the rear wheel, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Right? Pretty easy to loosen up the rear wheel and then do it. Oh, there we go. So is that still stuck on that sprocket and that bolt? It is. It's still stuck on that bolt, the bottom of that bolt. And so it's stickiness. That's kind of a pain in the neck. <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, it's getting stuck behind the bolts, the sprocket bolts, on the bottom side. Got to get it beyond those sprocket bolts so it will come around. There we go. Maybe that's maybe that's good. Let's try it. It's on the front. It's on the rear. It looks like it's gonna go. This is kind of the tricky part where you kind of have to spin it. There we go, and then it sits. Whoa, that's way too tight. Okay, that's entirely too tight right now. It's on there, but yeah, I can't run it like that. It's got absolutely no slack in it whatsoever. So um, let me get a wrench and I'll uh, loosen this up. Okay, we're back. The right tools make all the difference. So what do we got here? We got a uh, 17 millimeter on an impact. There we go, we'll loosen these up a little bit. Okay, perfect. Get a little slack in that. These chain adjusters look like they're a 10. So let me back off the chain adjuster a little bit, which will then bring the sprocket in. There we go, that looks a lot better, right? Now the trick with that is, I also have to do the same thing with the other side. Now the problem is, I don't know exactly how many turns I took it out. That looks like pretty good right there. Let's put this back on. I'll take, oops. Oh, that's holding it. okay. Spinning inside the wheel, so I just have basically have to hold one side and tighten the other. Okay, check the chain tension. It's a little bit tight. It's a little bit tight. It's a little bit tight. You know what, though? I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's putting a lot of stress on that motor. Okay, so what do we need to do next? We need to take the motor here. We have it in positive and negative slots right now. I need to put an XT60 connector on there um, and then we'll thread it into the, uh, the battery tray, hook it up to the speed controller and see if she goes, right? I wonder if I can hook it up to the speed controller. Anyway, no, I have an XT60 connector on it to the battery or to the uh, speed controller, so I can't do that. So, okay, so it's time to get out the soldering stuff. We'll clip these wires off, solder some XT60 connectors on it, plug it in, see how it goes. Let's try it out. Okay, we're back. While the heat soldering iron is heating up, I'm gonna just try it and see if it works. So I need to clip these ends off right now because we're not using the stock connectors. The problem with the stock connectors, especially with the overvolt situation, is if we overvolt the motor with the plastic connectors, we find that they melt. And we don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna do is expose some of these wires and wire it into our existing XT60 connector on the other side that we have. We'll plug it in for a little bit and just see if it runs. And make sure that I have the polarity correct before I wire or before I solder in the XT60. That's the problem, right? When you solder in on these connectors and then you figure out you got them the wrong way, that's never good. So the stock output of the speed controller are blue and yellow. Um, and what you have to do is test the motor to see which one is positive and which one is negative to make sure that the motor turns in the in the correct direction. So for now. I'm going to put the red to the red, or the red to the blue, right? I marked it red for positive. And then the black to the black, or the black to the yellow. And then see if this will work. I'll turn on the key. 
Okay, it says I have 39.4 volts. I'll pick the rear wheel up. I hit the throttle and see if it turns forward. Oh, it does. It turns forward. <laughs> oh, it turns forward. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Oh, this is gonna be so good. This is gonna be so good. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Excellent, okay. So let's solder on the XT connector on these. We'll plug it in, we'll put the batteries in, we'll go take it for a ride. Okay, I think we're good to go. Our soldering iron is heating up. We'll test the solder on it and make sure it melts. Yes, it does. Excellent, we have smoke, we have fire. We're good to go. The first thing we'll do is we'll tin the wires um, coming off of here. So we'll make, uh, this is kind of tricky without a stand. So what I'm gonna do is try to hold the wire and the soldering iron in one hand without burning myself. Let's see if we can do this. I did this yesterday and we'll try to heat up that wire, right? Now what I found in soldering is if you can melt a little bit of solder on the, the iron itself, and then get it to transfer over to the wire, um, it'll go a lot faster and you can heat it up. There you go, perfect. And then we got that one tinned, which means basically I just put a little solder on the end of the wire to help it, okay? We'll do the same thing with the red. Put it over here. You can tell how hot this is, right? This is what I do not want to be touching with my hand, um, including that round piece on the end of it. Um, this gets a little tricky. I'm trying to do this bent over in one hand. Thankfully, I don't have to hold the camera because I bought a tripod. And we'll do the same thing here. There we go. We'll get a little solder melted on there. Try to get it transferred over with the heat. The melted solder is actually, I think, what transfers the heat to the wire better. Um, I've tried before just to basically heat up the wire and it took a long time before it would actually melt solder. Oh, there we go. Now it just, you could tell it heated up because then it just absorbed the solder from the iron right into the wire itself. So what I'm gonna do is keep this hot. Put that there, keep that hot. And then I'll take my XT60 connector, make sure I got the right one. Oh, I almost forgot. This is the biggest mistake that everybody makes in soldering, right? Take your heat shrink, put it on the wire and slide it all the way down right on both sides because you need the heat shrink anyway to seal up these connectors right so I put the heat shrink all the way down there the problem is if you leave them up here then they melt on the wire and then you can't slide them up right so they're, they're of no use to you so the XT660 connector has a negative and a positive on it I make sure the one coming out of the speed controller for the motor right that that one plugs in because one's, one's female one's male so I'm gonna put the male end on the motor okay and then I'll take the positive side, I'll put it over to the positive of the XT60 connector here, okay? Now this is gonna be a trick, right? Because I'm gonna try to do this all with like two hands, right? And I should have something that will actually hold it. I'm gonna try to heat this up a little bit. Maybe I can, actually I can do it like this. Maybe I can do it like this. Let's see if this will work. The problem is these take such a tremendous amount of heat to get in there because they, they essentially they sink the heat into the connector. There we go. And then we melt a little bit of solder on there. We try to get it into the connector itself. All right, so I'm melting it on the tip. And I try to get it so it will go into the connector. This isn't really working very well like this. Let's see if I can reorient. There we go. That might be a little bit easier. We'll see. I remember I got, I have the, um, the shrink wrap on it. There we go. And I'll keep putting solder in there. Okay. Now I got a pretty good amount of solder in there. So let me heat the whole thing up. It's got a little crap on the tip. Heat the whole thing up. Get this solder, solder to turn liquid solder I think is what they call it get this solder to turn liquid with the heating iron the so soldering iron ow that's hot right that'll tell you be careful that's hot um, and we get the solder to heat up 
then it needs to actually heat whatever it's bonding to, right? The wire and the connector itself have both got to be hot enough for the solder to take, uh, to like bond to them, to attach to them. Because if they're not, it'll just pull out. So that looks pretty good. Let's see if it stays. Yeah, that stays. Look at So that got very lucky. I'm normally not that good with solder, but, uh, or solder, or whatever you want to call it. So one down, one to go. We'll put the negative in there. Okay. Again, what I need to do is try to get some solder in there to start it, and then I can start melting it down. Where did I put the solder? Here it is. Okay. What I'm using is like very, very fine strand solder or solder. Um, I find that it melts. It takes more, um, but I find that it melts easier. And then I can make that little ball in the port, in the part that I need. And then once it's liquid, it seems to transfer heat a lot better. Um, so the key is to get it melted on the iron liquid and then start feeding it in and increasing the liquid in there. Um, and the liquid is what I found transfers heat better than actually the solder itself, or better than the soldering iron. This one's actually taking a lot. It may, it may get really lucky. It may look really good. Let's see. Put that in there. I don't know if that's going to take or not. Oh my god, it took. Look at that. Look at that. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the gun, or the, the iron. I got those in there. Okay, then you find my lighter. Here we go. I find my two shrink wraps that I put in there before. I'll thread the shrink wrap up onto over the top of the connectors uh, so we don't get any sparking or anything um, shorting out. Remember, we're, we're dealing with 36 volts here instead of 12 or instead of 24 stock. So we're dealing with high voltage. And if we lipo this, if we put some lithium ion batteries in it, it's going to be even heavier, or it's even going to be more dangerous because you don't want to mess around with those. So um, there we go. We got the connection on. We got the heat shrink around there. Okay. We'll just test, make sure it doesn't pull out. Okay. Those are tight. There's a nice and on there tight. Okay. So let's plug it in to the speed controller. Oh, the thing is still hot. Um, put away the solder. We're done with that. Turn the key on, make sure it goes, and make sure it goes in the right direction. <laughs> and the brake works perfectly. I can't tell you how excited I am about that. Well, you could probably see how excited I am about that, right? I guess the only thing we didn't put on is the cover for the wires um, to keep these things not exposed. That probably would have been a good idea. Um, what I can do is I could wrap them in black tape an electrical tape, or actually I think I have um, a little case that will go around here and, and take care of that. Um, and those wires will actually go through there, which would be good. And then we'll put the batteries back in and then we take it for a ride. Unfortunately, I think it's raining, so we may be riding in the rain. But uh, let me get a cover for these wires. We'll come back, we'll put everything together, we'll take it for a ride. Okay, we're back. Another eBay slash Amazon special. I went on and I found that they had these wire looms, um, all different sizes. And uh, I just bought a big bulk of the wire loom, and uh, it seems to come in pretty handy. So I got some electrical tape. I got my wire looms. I'll get the length on here, probably, probably about that long right there. Uh, I'll cut it. There we go. And then we'll start threading the wire on there. So it's split in the middle, the loom is, so you can actually get it started here and then slide it onto the wires and get them all covered up. And then this will help from chafing and rubbing and exposure. And um, what, it'll, it, what it will do is it help preserve the the wires, the integrity of the insulation, and also it will um, stop it from rubbing off and shorting out and maybe even protect it a little bit from the weather. Okay, so we have that there. Let's take some electrical tape. I'll put one on one end 
before I slide it down. Just to keep this closed, to keep the wires on it. Perfect. Slide that all the way to the motor. And the length actually ended up pretty good, didn't it? So we'll put the remainder of this up into the connector, into the wire looms. Maybe a little bit long. Nope, I can roll it back. There we go. Excellent. Take another piece of tape, put it up on the top, hold this together. And now we're looking pretty good, right? I may actually tape that right to the connector, and then it won't have any exposure there. Be a little bit better. And then what I can do is I can essentially just take this tape and just loop it all the way down um, and just kind of hold this insulation together, this connector, um, and then we don't have to worry about the wires falling out or anything like that. And uh, I mean, I suppose I could fully wrap it, um, but I think that's going to be good enough for now. And then that'll go under there. This will go in here. I'll put the batteries back in it again. These batteries are heavy. That's why you use lithium ion, I guess. One of the big advantages of, of the lithium ion batteries is they're so light. Um, but I feel pretty good about these batteries. They're lead acid, but they're 10 amps. So that's pretty high amperage. Um, and then, we can, uh, if I can get this in there, tuck all the wires away, and then I'm going to have to fashion something to put the deck back on. Uh, the problem is, the uh, with these wires, the, the stock batteries are normally oriented um, so they lay down, um, and it fits two of them in there perfectly. But when you put three of them in, um, now they have to sit up on top, and, um, and obviously then the deck is going to be too high. So what I've read is, uh, from the people who make this fast scooters, you're just supposed to flip them around. I think I'm going to wrap them with black tape, flip them around, and then you can put the deck over the top, and you've got to put some spacers and some higher screws in there. But for now, I think we take it for a test drive. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, scooter's all wired up. New selfie stick, no deck. Turn on the key. Let's see how she goes. She goes. She goes. Okay, I'm driving it through the grass. Let's see how we're gonna go now. Now I'm trying to do it one-handed, right? But uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's working pretty good. It's like a quarter throttle, um, but it feels pretty good. And uh, let's see how it goes up this hill. Up oh, there comes a the car. It torques up the hill pretty well. It comes another car. Just try not to get hit. And uh, we'll take her for a ride. We'll see how she goes. Oh, she goes well. Great. Oh, it's very fast. I need to GPS this. And uh, see how fast she goes. But uh, it seems like it's going really good. Turn around and we'll go back. And then we gotta figure out how we're gonna put the deck back on this. sketchy with one hand. Ow. Ow. 
and we're back. Okay, so the scooter goes well. Uh, top speed stayed at around 17 miles an hour. It was kind of vacillating between 16 and 17, which may be incrementally slower than the uh, 24 volt 250 watt motor. Um, I think it's 50 RPM slower. I think this motor is 2700 and I think the 24 volt is 2750. So that would explain that. Um, I took it up the hill. The motor is hot. I wouldn't say warm. I was going to say warm, but it's hot. Um, I took it up the big hill. It carried me all the way up the hill. I stopped a couple of times to check the motor and then started out again. But it carries me up a very large hill, um, which I'm excited about. Um, that was really the goal of the scooter. And I'm thinking maybe with a 500 watt motor, it'll, uh, it'll carry me up without even being warm. But, um, so the top speed stays at 17. With the 65 tooth rear sprocket, um, we're torquing it down a little bit to get a little bit better hill climbing ability, but that's the goal anyway. And uh, basically all I have to do now is uh, flip over the batteries, uh, button it up, and then figure out how I'm gonna put that deck board back on the top so we can ride it. So um, I think it's good to go. I like it. The uh, 350 watt motor fits in there really well and uh, didn't run into too many sags, so pretty much a piece of cake. So thanks for tuning in.